Yes, my name is Bronson. It is a privilege to be here, to be serving in this way. Um, you may have seen me before, normally doing something stupid. Last time I was here, I was dressed in an inflatable reindeer, sweating bullets for our Carols on Queen service. But it's a privilege to be here tonight. And I know God wants to do some amazing things. I was looking at the roster, I saw my name, thought it may have been a mistake. So I quickly refreshed the page a few times, wouldn't go away. So I figured, hey, I'll show up. We'll see what God wants to do. But you know, right next to my name, it said testimony. And I was like, am I supposed to share my testimony? I don't know. But I decided, nah. Because <laughs> I have the mic and I'm pretty hard to get off a stage too. But I did, I did want to share something personal with you, a journey that I've been on with God, just as long as you don't tell anyone else. Just keep it between me and you. It's quite personal, all right? But right before, um, right before New Year's, we had our uh, kids' takeover service. Yeah, you had your kids' production, kids doing an amazing job. It's a great time. It's a really great time, not just for parents, but all the babies come out, and everyone's like, ah. They were like real cute. They forget their lines. It doesn't matter. I don't know how that's fair. I've forgotten lines before and I got in trouble. But when they forget lines, they, oh, it's all right. Oh, they're so cute. They forgot their lines. Everyone's so excited. Anyway, we were doing this in Monaco and the kids just like raced through. I don't know what was going on. They were just straight wrapping their lines. And we finished 15 minutes early and I was up next. No, that's half an hour. <laughs> I'm not real good at winging stuff. I do better off a prepared base. Any of my prepared people out there? Yeah? Preparation makes perfect. And so they finish early, and I got up and I was like, wow, they finish early. What are we going to do? <laughs> and I don't know what happened. The crowd turned on me, and everyone started chanting, sing, sing, sing. I'm not a regular singer. It's not going to work tonight, trust me. I'm not a regular singer. I've had to sing in some productions and things like that. And everyone's like, sing a Christmas carol, sing a Christmas carol. And they're all yelling. And I start panicking. Like a real panic. Like, I don't know what it looked like out there, but on the inside, <laughs> like I just, I didn't know what to do. And the worst thing of all, I couldn't think of one Christmas carol. Not one. It got a bit awkward, to say the least. I ended up just pulling someone up that I know could sing a Christmas carol, and they sang it for me. The, amazing, oh, the service was amazing. The Holy Spirit fell. Just the fire of God everywhere. You should have been there. Anyway. <laughs> but after that moment, I uh, took some time with God, and I had to be honest with God, because the reason why I panicked was a genuine fear. Like I had an actual panic attack. And I literally couldn't think of one Christmas song. I said to him, my wife was like, why don't you just sing? God bless her soul. You sing in front of everyone. <laughs> I'll pay for that one in the car. But anyway, she was like, why don't you just sing? And I was like, man, I couldn't think of one Christmas carol. She was like, jingle bells? I was like, that would have been a good one. But at the time, I just panicked. On stage, in front of people. You know, for those that don't know, I've had the privilege of being a part of Christmas um, productions and things like that. You know, we did it in the Altair Center and the Civic. I've had to memorize so many, like, lines, but in that moment, nothing. Nothing. And I, I spent some time with God, and I was like, God, I need to face this fear. I need to figure out. I need to figure out what this is. I, I don't want to live this way. And if something can make me freeze on the spot in front of all my friends and people didn't realize that I was freaking out, they just thought I was being stubborn. <laughs> but the truth of it was I was scared. And so I've been on this journey over Christmas, over New Year's. I took some time. I've been reading some great books. But I really dove into the Bible to find out surely I'm not the only one who has been scared of anything before. Yeah? Has anyone been afraid of anything before? Anyone got some fears? You know, the problem for me, though, is that the thing that freaked me out is something that people, other people do regularly. 
And that bugged me. Because every Sunday I come in and see people singing, and I'm like, why aren't you freaking out? And I've done encounter, to, encounter week. Anyone done encounter week? Man, I've done that three, like three times. I've been there three times. Responded to altar calls. Take me, Lord, everything. Yeah, I had this thing. And the Holy Spirit really took me to this passage. Took me to this passage, and we're going to read through it. But it's an encounter that Moses has with God. The burning bush. Yeah? Anyone read the burning bush? Moses encountering the burning bush? Yeah, so it's got, we got Moses. He's with his animals. He's farming. And he sees a bush that's not being consumed by this fire. There's no smoke. Just raging fire. Leaves. Imagine green leaves inside this fire. It's pretty crazy. And so Moses has this encounter, obviously a miraculous encounter. And God starts speaking to him about some things he's wanting him to do. Our friend Moses, he's got a whole lot of excuses. Whole lot of excuses. I don't want to ask if you've got excuses. Probably be all of us raising our hands, but he's got a whole lot of excuses. He says to him, well, who am I? Who am I to go ask that the Israelites be set free from Egypt? That's a good question because the last time he was in Egypt, he killed somebody. Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. The next question he asks is, who should I say sent me? That's a good question. You don't want some guy just going into the desert, talking to himself, coming back, trying to tell you what to do. Yeah? And God says, tell them I sent you. But through all this time, God's telling him, surely I will be with you always. And all of this stuff, he says, surely I'll be with you always. And Moses finally comes to this point where that's no longer enough. Where he finally says to God, yeah, I know you'll be with me, but that's not good enough. You got the wrong guy. Has God ever asked you to do something? And you're like, <laughs> I saw some people looking like that when we were talking about dance moves. You must be talking to someone else. These legs don't move like that. <laughs> but he finally, he finds himself in, the, himself in this place and he just finally speaks what's on his heart. And we're gonna pick it up. Exodus 4 verse one. It says, Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to, what, listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand and take it by the tail. So Moses reached out. He took a hold of the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. When I read that, I was like, finally someone in the Bible trying to run. <laughs> finally, so, look, I didn't run off the stage. I just froze awkwardly. So it's like a step better. And so when I read this passage, because I read a few others, I was like, man, this is how I felt in that moment. And when it came to singing, this is how I feel. Run. <laughs> and so I have a few points that we're going to go through. Yeah, I've got a few points that I've got to go through. But I believe what God's wanting to do is wanting to locate within us areas of fear that are stopping us from doing what he's calling us to do, what he's destined us to do. But he also wants to tell you it's all right to be afraid. Yeah? And so the first thing he says, what if they don't believe in me? What if they don't believe me? Well, you know, this is a real common thing. Have you ever used what other people say to dictate what you do in life? Sorry, I kind of just like jumped into that one. Sorry, no joke on that one. You're going to have to take it straight. But what if they don't believe me? It's not the they that's the problem because the they aren't there. It's him and God. 
But he says they. Have you ever done that? Just asking for a friend? <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend, God, but what if they don't believe me? See, the problem's not what they believe. It's with what we believe. What do you believe? You know, you come into the space, it's full of the Holy Spirit. You got all these people here telling you, I'm getting baptized because of what God's doing in my life. That's the God we serve. The God that will bring change when you want it. Bring transformation when you need it. Empower you when you ask for it. That's the God that we serve. We can't live for what other people will believe. But we're not in a place to make judgments of whether people will respond to us or not. It's so easy for me to say, well, I'm in Monaco all the time. I've never been in the city. What if they don't believe in me? What if I'm not funny? God's like, don't be stupid. I made you hilarious. <laughs> but too often, that's what we're concerned about. That the everyone else. What if I post about my belief and people don't think it's cool? What if I share, come to church, come to the church barbecue, but people are like, meh. That's not what we're responsible for. We're responsible for believing in ourselves and believing in God, amen? All right, the next one, he says, what is in your hand? This is my favorite one. What is in your hand? God loves to use what's in your hand. Whatever's in your hand, it doesn't matter. You know, you look through, anyone come up with uh, New Year's resolutions? Yeah? Don't be shy. I know you'll quit on it already. That's why you don't want to raise your hand. <laughs> but just raise your hand. I made some resolutions. I haven't started yet. Yeah. <laughs> God loves to use what you already have. You know, the, that's the problem with the world that we live in. It's all about what you don't have, what you need to get. You make some resolutions. Oh, I'm going to get this this year and my world will be different. I'm going to buy this this year and my world will be different. If I could just get that, my world will be different. But that's not the God we serve. We serve a God that is what have you got right now. You know, anything you may have lost in 2019, you never needed. Any friend that you had that you don't currently have, you never needed. If something was taken from you, it's because God doesn't think you need it. Because what you do have is what you do need. Amen? God loves to use what's in our hands. You know, 1 Samuel 17, verse 49, he used what was in David's hand. That was my devotion this morning. I was like, great, thanks, David. I'm preaching on scared Moses, and I have to read about David slaying Goliath, about how he just charged at the giant. Way to rub it in. In Judges 15, verse 15, Samson uses what, he's in his, what is in his hand. You know, it says he, he killed people with a, the jawbone of a donkey. But some people say that he actually just grabbed the closest thing to him, which was the jawbone attached to a donkey. And he just swung that thing to all he had left was a jawbone. It doesn't matter what's in your hand, it's a bit graphic. All the vegans in here, forgive me. No animals were harmed in the writing of the Bible. <laughs> Up here in the house of God lying. John verse 6. John verse 6, we all know this one. God used five loaves and two fish. And that's what the little boy was carrying. But that was enough. It was enough. Don't let the world tell you that what you have isn't good enough. Don't let the world tell you you don't look good enough. You don't sound good enough. You're either too tall or too short. You have everything you need for God to move in your life. You have everything in your, look, you don't need it all. You know, I just look around and I'm like, why aren't you preaching? <laughs> why did I have to come preach when you got these amazing preachers here? You got Pastor Esther can sing, Pastor Scott can dance. You got Pastor Ed. Pastor Ed just looks good all the time. I can't wait for that baby to kick in and you start dressing stink. But so many amazing people here that can do all these different things. 
I remember I was preaching in kids on Shout, and there was Reggie, Reggie Dabs, there was Esther, and someone said, man, Reggie plays a saxophone, Esther can sing, what are you going to do? <laughs> wow, well, I don't know. Maybe I need to learn how to juggle. <laughs> but I don't need anything I don't have. You know, I don't plan any jokes before I preach. I don't write anything because I don't like people calling me funny because then what if I'm not? That makes you a liar and me look stupid. But I don't get here worrying about what I don't have because I know what I do have. I got this, baby. I got a voice that I can use to serve people. You know, too many of us, when we're looking goals, setting goals, dreaming, too concerned about what we don't have. But God's just asking, what do you have in your hand? Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, what do you have in your hand? Turn to the one you awkwardly just ignored and they, they were talking to the back of your head and tell them. <laughs> Some rude people in here, sorry guys. It's too easy for us to take it for granted. It's too easy for us to take what we have for granted. The problem's not with what is in our hands, the problem's with the way we view what's in our hands. You know, the Bible says that God's thoughts are higher than ours. Higher than the heavens are from the earth, so are my thoughts from yours. That's what the Bible says. Our problem's not with what we have, it's how we perceive what we have. Amen? You have everything you need. And then God tells them to do this. Throw it down. Throw it down. Before he uses anything, he needs us to surrender it. You know, as I talked about the boy with the loaves and the fish, you know, before that fish and those loaves of bread were able to feed 5,000 people, something had to happen first. It had to go from the little boy and it needs to, needed to be handed to Jesus. The moment it was handed to Jesus, he broke it and he gave it and a miracle happened. That's what happens when we take what we have and we surrender it to God. The little that we have. Yeah? the little that we have, we give it to Jesus, the dreams that we have, the aspirations that we have, the goals that we have, the talents that we have, the giftings that we have, we take it all and we give it to Jesus. And he does something miraculous with it. The next thing is he runs. Who would run from a snake? Yeah, I'm not much of a snake guy, but I can't say that you know, I would run, I don't know. But I know what I would run from, and that's mice. <laughs> Any people don't like mice in here? Be honest, raise your hand. Raise it to Jesus. <laughs> if you like rats, good job for you, rat man. You can have them. <laughs> but me, if I see a mouse, I'm out of there. I remember one night I was playing Guitar Hero. Anyone remember Guitar Hero? I was just jamming out in the living room by myself. Wow. <laughs> on easy. <laughs> and then I see something move in the corner of my eye. It would have been like maybe two o'clock in the morning. Don't judge me, you don't know me. <laughs> this was before Jesus captured me, all right? Anyway, so I was playing. <laughs> I'm like, I was in church at that time. Two o'clock in the morning, moving on. Moving on, so I was playing a worship song on Guitar Hero, and I saw something move in the corner of my eye, and I freaked out. I was like, what was that? I'm not pointing at you, you're not the mouse. I'm pointing you over here. I was like, what is that? And I just freeze. Slow panic, and I'm standing there, and I'm like, and dude, dude comes out again, runs across behind the TV, I'm out of there. I'm on the couch, I'm banging on the wall, I'm flirting with my best friend. And I'm just like, ah, ah, just whack that wall as hard as I can. My mate comes out in his undies, what's going on? What's going on, man? V 
ready to take on the world? Hus, 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 hus. I'm like, there's a mouse. And he's like, what? I was like, dude, there's a mouse. I saw it. I thought it's because he didn't believe me. I didn't think it was because my fear was unrational. I thought I just thought, there's a mouse. Long story short, he goes over with a bucket. You don't even need clothes to catch a mouse, but I was scared. But he like gets the mouse, takes it outside, it dies. And then, like, <laughs> it dies, this is a, this is a short story. <laughs> it was very, you know, God rest its soul, lived a good life, you know. You gotta teach people lessons around here. You gotta tell these mice, to come around here. That's what happened. Chitty, chitty, bang, bang. That's what happened. Anyway. <laughs> but he runs from the snake. He runs from the snake. And God says, come back here and pick it up. If you saw me on the couch and my friend said, bro, just come grab it by the tail. <laughs> now you grab it by the tail. Not touching a mouse. Obviously a snake's dangerous, but you don't know. Could be a man-eating mouse. I feel a lot of judgment in this space. <laughs> Jesus, forgive them, Lord. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> Judging me over this. But God says to him, reach out and take it. Reach out and take it. God, did you not just see me run from it? God, did you not just see the fear on my face? I'm not talking about like a crocodile hunter back away. You're right, Gil. You're right, you man. You're right. This guy ran. And God says, come back. Come back. Come back and take it by the tail. Pick it up. Pick up the snake. Have you ever had a vision from God that scared you? Has God ever asked you to do something that scared you? Maybe the Holy Spirit was like, you should run a e group. You got the wrong guy. Maybe you should go to Egrim. <laughs> when was the last time something scared you and you faced it? You know what God's size dream comes with a bit of squeaky bum time. Sorry, I'm not allowed to say that. You know what I mean? A God's size dream. I'm privileged to sit in some amazing spaces and I get to sit in pastor's meetings and listen to Pastor Sam share around what he sees in the future. What if we do four services in the Spark Arena and all you can hear is the like, <laughs> the bum cheeks. <laughs> Especially Pastor Matt, because that's the logistics guy. Pastor Matt's got to sort it out. It was like, amen, Pastor Sam, let's do it. Yeah. Matt, you got the same, bro. <laughs> Pastor, Pastor Matt's like, four times a year? <laughs> and then we face it. You know, let's go to the Spark Arena four times a year. It's not just a good idea. It's a God idea. You know, when we first started e-groups, when we first started e-groups, it just didn't go well. And people were like, well, that was just not a good idea. Nah, it's gonna take something. You know, I feel like the freakiest thing that we face these days is consistency. That scares people more than anything else. Commitment. <laughs> you know what we like to do with commitment? We like to call it religion because it makes us right. Why don't you come to church every Sunday? Don't be so religious, man. Nah, it's consistent. Speaking of New Year's resolutions, you see people with abs? That didn't just happen overnight. I'm not talking from experience, all right? 
I'm saying I know a guy that's got abs. Moa, Moa goes to the gym all the time. But you don't get results unless you're consistent. But we want spiritual, tangible results, miraculous results without consistency. It's the thing we fear the most. They're trying to lock me into e-group. Every Tuesday? I can't think of one TV show, but I was gonna say it's on Tuesday and you're not gonna make it. Consistency will make us what we want to be. It's not religion, it's relationship. I can't just turn up every other night and go home and then tell my wife I love her. She'd be like, well, where are you the rest of the time? When things go wrong in life, when you hit a wall, when you hit a snag and you need people, you know who will be there for you? Your e-group. I've seen it time and time again. Yet it's such a freaky thing to commit to building relationship. What about Encounter Weekend? It's too scary. What if I start crawling the walls? Don't worry, we'll hold you down. Shut up, shut up. but it just takes steps of consistency. You're here this Sunday. Why don't you try coming next Sunday? And then the Sunday after that. Why don't you try talking to someone? If you don't like that, do what I do. Just let people talk to you. And go like this. I remember when I got in trouble for not talking to the visitors. It wasn't it wasn't because I was stuck up or anything, it's just because the fear of embarking on that awkward situation scared me. I just wasn't a people person. And if you're here tonight, <laughs> it's a rough place to be if you're not a people person. But we are created to be people people. We are created for relationship. I see it all the time and I know it. You're like, shake someone's hand. You're like, God, no, please, no. Give someone a hug. That's even worse. You know, people are like, looking like little baby T-Rex around here, not giving real hugs. But we need to face it sooner or later. I'll just invite the worship team to come up. Save me, Lord. Where's Wayne? Come sing a song and save me but he needed to face his fear. You know, this is the beautiful thing. He picks up the snake and it turns into a staff. He didn't pick it up for what it was. God's not, pick up the snake, it'll be fun. <laughs> pick up the snake. He picks up the snake and turns to a rod. He didn't pick it up for what it was. He picked it up for what it was going to become. Let's not judge situations from the outside because we have no idea what's on the other side of it. There's some steps God's asked you to do some things and you've been wondering, oh, should I, should I give it a shot? Should I listen to this voice inside me telling me to do this, do that? Should I listen to it? Don't take it for what it looks like on the outside. Take a step of obedience to see what's on the other side and see what God can do. You know, the passage finishes with this. It says, in Exodus 4 verse 5, it says, This said the Lord is so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has appeared to you. God's not saying this snake party trick is gonna be the reason everyone believes I sent you. It's not that. Because the thing is when he takes the stick and he stands before the Pharaoh, when he performs the miracle, there's two other clowns there doing the same thing. They just throw their staffs down, they turn to snakes. It wasn't the whole snake thing 
that God was going to use to speak to a nation, to speak to Pharaoh. It was Moses' ability to listen to God. It was God saying, this is all you need, just a little bit of faith. When I say go, go. When I ask you to pray for your friend, when I ask you to share them the Gospel message that you carry, when I ask you to share that, that's how they'll believe I sent you. When they see a God-given confidence. See, I'm afraid of public speaking, but thank God I've been having to do it for years. I've been having to do it for years. It doesn't stop me from being scared. Some people say to me, surely you're not afraid of doing it now. Like last time we did Scrooge, people were like, bah, bitch, you know, like the back of your hand, my man, man, man. And I'm like, dude, get away from me. All I need is Jesus right now. Mark Stevenson, we did Scrooge three times together. Every time, oh, Pastor Mark, can you pray for me? Because I'll freak out, I'll panic. And you know what I've learned? I'm not gonna stop. That anxiety, it's just never gonna go away. But I tell you what gets a lot easier, I get up here a whole lot faster. I get up here a whole lot faster. I respond a whole lot faster. I'm a lot more desperate on what I, what I need to be desperate for. The presence of the Holy Spirit. I start relying on the right things. It doesn't mean that I'm never afraid. It doesn't mean I'm not sitting there panicking the moment that I get <laughs> brought up on stage but I face it faster. And I say yes every time. I say yes every time. You know, one of the things when I got married, my amazing wife, one of the things she used to see me check the roster. Uh, we see my name on the roster and, oh man, I'm rostered on again. And she was like, you probably shouldn't react to it that way. And we, had, we went on this journey to where when I saw the roster and I saw my name on the roster, preaching, leading service, whatever it would be, I would thank God. I would thank God that I have a mouth. I thank God that I have the ability to communicate the gospel. I thank God for the honor that it is to be able to serve people. Because that's what it is. Moses was so concerned about the they what do they believe? What are they going to say? That he wasn't able to see the fact that one God loved him, but he also loved all those people he was wanting to rescue. See, at the end of the day, it's not about us. And so I just want to invite you to stand to your feet. Got some amazing baptisms happening. But before we get into it, I'm just going to ask the worship team just to sing a song. I just wanna ask, can we just take a moment and ask God, what do you desire of me in 2020? What's something that I've been avoiding, I've been running from? Where's an area you can develop me, transform me? Where's a space that I can grow? You know, this year, I'm gonna go along to create. I'm gonna go along to create, not to sing on stage, but I just made a decision within myself that that fear has no place in my life. And so I'm gonna position myself in a place where I can face that fear. And I wanna encourage you to ask God, God, what is it? Where is it? 